Hi there, Sarah Prapa. So my name is Ellen. I'll be correcting this essay for you today. Let's take a look at what you have written here. It's really very helpful if you can include the task, the um, the image of what you corrected, of what you did here. That's very helpful. Um, but without it, I'll do my best to correct this. Nonetheless, let's see what you said. The bar chart illustrates a proportion of overseas students in 10 different countries who applied in British University in two periods of time, which is 1990 and 2014. All right, so there are a couple of problems here. The first problem is grammar. Um, and the other problem is uh, it's just a little uh, cumbersome. It's not really a, a sentence that flows very well. So you need to um, condense it a little bit. There was also a spelling mistake here. Now let's look at it again. The bar chart illustrates a proportion of overseas students from 10 different countries who applied to British universities, IES, in two periods of time, which are 1990 and 2014. All right, so you can see one sentence, lots of mistakes. Mm, what else did I want to tell you about this? Um, like I said, you could have condensed it. So why don't we try this a little differently? The bar chart illustrates uh, the proportion of overseas students from 10 different countries who applied to British universities in 1990 and 2014. All right, so you get rid of all these extra words, and I think it reads better that way. Overall, in 2014, every country had more international applicants than in 2009, except students from Cardiff. In addition, the highest percentage of both... I don't understand. The highest percentage... Oh, okay. The highest percentage in 2009... and 2014 was people from Brighton. So, you see you made an error here. It's talking about 2009 and not 1990, so I don't know where you got that number from. It should have just been 2009, 2014. You want to be careful with that kind of mistake, okay? All right, so uh, this is fine. This is good. You uh, used two pieces of information that's appropriate. The things that you picked out were good, uh, and I like this piece of information here as well. So let's move on and see what you said. Focusing on... 20, 2009, not focusing on in, but focusing on 2009, British universities, IES, received the most enrollment from Brighton, which was exactly 12%, followed by approximately 9% of those from Leeds. However, the proportion of the other eight countries were less than 8%. The lowest percentage was in Huddersfield, about 1%. So while this is fine um, on the whole, there is something that feels a little off about this paragraph. This is which British universities receive the most international students, isn't it? I think that's what you said up here. Yeah. Overseas students, international applicants. So it's not that they receive the most enrollment from Brighton. It's actually saying something different. It's saying focusing on 2009, the British University with the most international enrollment was Brighton uh, at 12%, followed by approximately 9% uh, in Leeds. Uh, do you understand? So um, the, the students are not coming from those universities. The students are coming from international locations, and they're studying there at those schools. Okay, so... Similar to 2014, again, no in here, similar to 2014, the number, uh, we're careful here with this word, we're not talking about numbers. Since everything is in percentages, you can either use the word percent, percentage, or figure, okay? So you use the word percent with a number in front of it, use the perc word percentage on its own with no number, and then, of course, a nice catch-all is the word figure. So... Uh, similar to 2014, the, sim the figure for enrollment in Brighton reached over 
applicants uh, to Birmingham were considered applicants were con considerably increased. Well, not were, but they considerably increased uh, from 8% to 12% without the word accurately, while Leeds percentage slightly rose to 10%. On the other hand, the least, the lowest figure was in Cardiff with around 1%. Okay. So as you can see, I had to correct a lot of the grammar, a lot of it. Um, so I want you to really be careful about that. This kind of, these kinds of mistakes are definitely going to lower your grammatical range and accuracy score. So you want to aim for higher accuracy. Um, there were some consistent mistakes and then there were some different mistakes throughout. So I really want you to be careful about that. Okay. Um, for the most part, it seems to me like grammar was the weakest area here. Um, and then there was a little misunderstanding of the task, I felt like in, in this paragraph. Um, so be careful with those things as well. All right. Um, I don't know if you mentioned to us what score you need, but, um, it is something that in my opinion needs a little work in order to get into one of the, the top four band scores. Okay, so why don't we move on and take a look at your task two about ex-prisoners. Let's see what you said here. There are people, mm, there are people who believe that explaining about the downsides of committing a crime to juveniles by person who has been captivated in the jail and becomes quality citizen is the best way. Okay, here this is a sentence that really has um it has to be cleaned up grammatically because it's not really very natural English, okay? So why don't we try it one more time and I'll make some suggestions to improve it. There are people who believe that um, having the downsides of jail explained to juveniles by an ex-prisoner is the best way to teach young people. So that's one of many ways you could have said it, but the sentence order, the word order is more appropriate. It's correct grammatically. It's at least workable. I felt like you had a lot of different things going on in this one sentence. Um, my rule of thumb generally is that when you see a sentence goes into the third line, you probably want to rethink it. It might be a sentence that's a little too complicated, a little too clunky. So be careful with it. Maybe split it up somehow. All right, let's keep going. In my opinion, I totally agree with this idea. And this essay will provide reasons to support its stance before the conclusion is reached. All right, fine. It feels a little formulaic, but it's, uh, it's fine on the whole. So let's continue and see what you said here in your body paragraphs. First of all, because the prisoners know about committing a crime as well as the adverse impacts, they can describe the negative effects of it clearly without so. All right, now here you need to explain to me why. All right, explain to me a little more. Give me an example. Give me some sort of tangible evidence for this. Moreover, the youth tend to trust and avoid breaking a law when the speaker has real experience. For instance, in Thailand, teenagers become aware of danger after listening to pris prisoners rather than teachers or their parents. Okay, so again, we've got some grammatical uh, mistakes here. Um, we'll talk more about this paragraph. I want to keep reading your um, essay in the then get back to this first body paragraph. Furthermore, this method is not only stimulating the fear emotion of children, but also decreasing the risk of criminal conducting by the youth. All right, here you've got a number of mistakes uh, in terms of vocabulary and grammar. So this method does not only provoke fear in children, but also decreases the risk of criminal acts by the young, okay? 
Since the people who have been in prison can give precise information about some behaviors or attitudes that can allow, I don't understand this, can allow committing criminal unconsciously together with a method to prevent those kinds of thoughts. I'm, I don't really understand that sentence. Uh, can give the precise information about some behaviors or attitudes that can allow committing crimes to get since the people all right no there's something happening with the sentence i'm afraid it's it, it kind of approaches incoherence because i'm just not clear i can't even try to correct it really to i can't figure out what you're trying to say in order to correct it so it's a sentence that definitely needs to be rewritten so uh for example some cause of making a guilty become from lack of sense of integrity in daily or don't have an ability to control some intensive emotions such as furious. Hence, this means of providing dangerous aspect of crime is one of the effective methods. All right, the next sentence has the exact same problem. It's grammatically um, and lexically uh, filled with mistakes that make it really difficult to correct and to change. So uh, I would definitely suggest rewriting that sentence as well. So let me go to the last sentence here. Hence, this means providing knowledge of the dangerous aspect of crime is an effective method in preventing it or in preventing future crimes. That would have been okay. All right, so let's move on. In conclusion, I definitely agree because giving information about how detrimental impact of criminal by citizen who is a prisoner before provides desirable results on juvenile's perspective. Okay, so again, what's happening here is more of the same thing that we've seen from pretty much the middle of the essay on. These sentences that really are just not natural English, they're not grammatically correct. And so it just creates um, incoherent language that's really rather difficult. Uh, for the examiner to understand. Um, so I feel like you're missing something here. I definitely agree that X, Y, Z, because giving information about how detrimental the impact, and then you lose me here, of criminal by citizen who is a prisoner before provide, it's just, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. All right, so then besides raise awareness for children, okay, besides raising awareness for children, it can decline the risk of uh, crime, full stop, not crimes commitment, just crime. Okay, so um, one thing that was definitely really clear in this essay is that grammar is an issue. You need to, I would say, boost your overall English um, uh, proficiency getting to a higher, get it to a higher level um, so that you're writing sentences that are more coherent, that we can understand, that don't have so many errors. I pretty much felt like the second half of the er essay uh, was difficult to understand because of so many errors. So I want you to be careful about that, okay? Um, paragraphing was fine. You did a lot of other things that were really good. You were straightforward with your position, and so that was all really well controlled. Now it's just the other things that we have to work about, worry about, which is, like I said, grammar and then some vocabulary as well, okay? So um, definitely give that a shot. Uh, I would be happy to see more of your essays, so take a look at the online course, see if that's something that interests you. Uh, but I want to see you working on uh, IELTS preparation with general language preparation as well so you can improve your overall level okay all right so best of luck to you i hope to hear from you soon um good luck with your ielts preparation